Is cash bad when using for a deposit to buy a house? Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb with REN Network, and we're here with Jason Bonarigo of RMS Mortgage talking about the seasoning of funds, because that's ultimately what it is, right? Um, so tell me, what does it mean? What does seasoning of funds mean? Well, it's kind of an industry buzzword, but it essentially means how long has the money been in your person or right. in your bank or on deposit. And, that, and that's massive because we can't have large deposits popping in and out. Right. So I, I have to imagine this is a regulatory thing. They kind of drug dealer aspect. They want to make sure we're not laundering money, things. Well, they want to make sure the consumer's not, exactly. Right, exactly. And, and, and large deposits going in and out. It's not so much, I mean, yes, that comes into it, obviously, but we're, you know, we're not the, we're not the, uh, we're not the authorities. But, right. but again, it, it's compliance with underwriting. So again, I think a perfect example would be, you know, if we see a large deposit and you're giving me a bank statement and, oh, yeah, I see your average balance, Mr. Jones, is $50,000, but I see that 48000 was deposited three days ago. Right. Technically, that season, and it's in the bank, but now I'm going to ask the question if I see that large deposit. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? So it doesn't okay. mean it's necessarily a bad thing, but where did it come from? So so we, let's get back to this cash pad, right? Because yes. uh, my yeah. wife and I, we have a no crap kind of fund, if yes. you will, stashed away, yep. right? Like cookie jar. Um, we do have accounts, or excuse me, not accounts, but a cookie jar sure. of, of money where if you know, if things went sideways tomorrow, at least yeah. we have that, right? Yeah. Rain, not rainy doomsday. day fund. Yes. Yeah, well, we're not doomsday preppers here, but it's, <laughs> but it, it, it's an oh crap fund. Next like cans of soup, yes. And it really turns into, honey, I need $20. And right, anyway. exactly. I'm going to go out. So so that mattress money, per se, sure. is that a bad thing to have when it comes to buying a house? Yeah. So no, and I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times in lending or people say, you know, cash is bad, cash is bad. Right. I mean, we don't love it. But again, you know, a lot of times culturally we see that. Some cultures will save cash. They'll use different neighborhood funds and, and neighbors saving for each other and, and, and paying into certain funds to help ownership. And that's amazing and that's awesome. It's just how do you document it? How do you work right. with it? And, and honestly, Jeff, the, the toughest part is sometimes when people have mattress money because culturally they, sometimes they just don't believe in banks and that's okay too. Um, it's just how do I work with that and how do I help them when they've already come to me with, hey, all my all my deposit money is at home and literally in my mattress. Right. Or so if they come to you before they've actually found the house and they've gone under agreement, it's a lot easier. It's a lot to easier because then I can say, hey, this is how we're going to work right. with that, or this is how we're going to season the money, which right. is your initial point, which is let's get it into some version of a bank or certified fund so we can track it. It's not so again, it's not about the cash being bad. It's yes, we have to figure out where it came from, but it's more about seasoning it so we can put it into the pipeline and help verify for their down right. payment. So you Big word, verify. How do you verify? Verify. It? Well, we don't verify cash because we just have to explain, you know, again, maybe culturally how they saved it, okay. and which is easily explainable, and we're not going to question that. Um, obviously, if the borrower can't explain it, then we tend to... Right, so I don't, I don't need to say, well, $100 of this came from my grandma. No, of, my course, not. of yeah, course not. But, I mean, the rule of thumb is really anything over kind of 50% of your normal pay, uh, uh, half of uh, half of your normal pay in a deposit. So right. if, you know. So if I was making five grand a month and you saw the Anything over 25, right. okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be questioning that. We don't nickel and dime it, obviously, but anything, and of course anything, five, 10, $15,000. Hey, where did that come from? And it could be, oh, oh my right. dad gave it to me for buying a house, or I sold a car. Which or, is all fine. It's all fine. It's right. just, where did it come from? It just can't be like, well, it was in there, sorry. Well, you know, what, why are you asking me? And I do get that. Sometimes it gets, personal, but, but we do have to track it and that's all it again. Now here's the key is that if you had given me those bank statements maybe two months worth, which is what we usually ask for, 60 days. And that's the seasoning. That's the seasoning. And then your current balance, because we always see that current tab, right? Available balance, current balance, ending balance. What was your ending balance last month? What's your ending balance now? If it was consistently at that 25,000, let's say, and the deposit happened four months ago, Guess what? We're not asking it's that seasoned. because we feel like it's seasoned and it's been right. there. It's only when we see those large deposits that the Recent, underwriters are going to have. Recent large deposits. Recent large deposits. Hence, the, back that's, to the point of that's seasoning. The key. So coming to you beforehand. We want you guys right. to keep that in mind on the deposits. So you just can't dump it in at the last minute. You, you mentioned two things that I thought of when I bought the, our house in Southie yep. is, number one, large deposits. And number two, I remember it was a large cash deposit. Now, first off, when you work in sales, all of yep. my... 
deposits are large deposits because I don't get a monthly paycheck, right? Right. And if you're a small business owner, sometimes you're you're mixed in with your regular checking account, right? right? So, you're, so those I, are those are business deposits. Right. And I remember having which to you're give, okay too. And I remember having to give, you know, this deposit was to this deal. I remember this that. Thing. Yeah. So, right. but I remember there was one in there, and it was I think it was like six grand or seven grand, right? And I could not figure out like this deal with what it was. What it and was it and how you turned think? out after a lot of figuring it, trying to research. figure this out. It was when I sold my truck, and they gave me yes. seven thousand dollars in cash, I remember and that. then I went and deposited, and it just didn't even right. dawn on me, you know, as oh right. wait, hold on. And most folks don't have as many deposits as you do, but but to your point, I mean, you know, again, we're, we're going to ask that, or if a lot of times, hopefully now, folks have a business account, right, with right. those deposits in it, and then they have yeah. their personal account. Well, and the other this thing is, is we, can, we could probably do a whole other show on is 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 the Venmo, right? Because right. we're even. We're working with Venmo, and but we do like that because again, it's, maybe it's child support or some small, you know, deposits moving back and forth. We want to be able to document that, and a lot of times, Jeff, honestly, those would have been cash right. movements. Now, easily documentable on on Venmo, and that helps us a ton with consumers. To be quite honest. So, what about my Bitcoin? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see it. So, right. um, so that's the seasoning of funds. Is cash bad when it comes to buying a house? Not I think all the, the time. answer is no. It's if not if all you the time, no. if you attack the problem, if right. you will, and kind of know beforehand, and ask the question right. early on. And again, a good lender and a good agent is usually asking about the, you know, your down payment kind of, hey, where's it coming from? It's one of the questions that I like to ask pretty early on in the game because I've learned over the years that's how you don't get bit by it. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. So that's seasoning of funds. Um, I'm Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Home Team. We're brokered by EXP Realty. Jason? Yes. Uh, Jason Bonarigo, RMS Mortgage 617-413-5038 is the cell phone. Best way to get a hold of me. And if you're enjoying this content and you want to learn more, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. And also, just if you have any questions about the home buying process or whatever it could be, uh, please reach out. We're always looking for new topics to talk about and ultimately help you in any way we can. So uh, until next time, we look forward to hearing from you.